So thank you. Good morning, everyone. So I'm glad to be here to uh, share our insight of IoT. On behalf of the company, especially, I'd like to share about uh, how we map the mobile strategy together with the IoT strategy. So, okay, so IoT, I believe um, everyone knows Internet of Things. The, the word Internet seems very familiar with us, like, because uh, we do deal with Internet every day. We do emails, we do our messaging, we do a lot of things through Internet. But the Internet of Things is really more than that. We are moving from H to M, human to human machine, okay, to now M to M, machine to machine interaction. Meaning, we, we used to operate the machine through human, okay, operating the machine. But now, machine to machine can have interaction between each other by using some, uh, like the thermal sensor, sensor, thermal sensor, etc. cetera, okay, and do some interaction together with human behavior in order to make some better security for us and a better plan in our lives. I had a movie um, last week, okay, Avengers, I believe most of us have been seen this. This is very popular, uh, this is recently. And uh, Tony Stark, the Iron Man, uh, there's a scene in his lab. Uh, when Iron Man, Iron Man uh, when Tony Stark is walking out from his lab, the light goes on from his head, okay, on his pathway. It looks innovative, right? But it's, it's nothing more than a sensor who sends who uh, where this person is walking. In fact, it's everywhere around, around us nowadays. IoT is now moving from um, uh, industrial, commercial, to now even home use. Okay? We, 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 uh, most of us have heard about um, smart, intelligent home. Okay? Like we use the uh, sensor, thermostat, and together with our behavior to control our lighting system at home, air conditioning at home, so we can have a better living and a smart living. Okay, so it's not far from us, it's not rocket science, it's now here. So today, we have 4.1 billion devices around the world, which is out to later. And in the coming future, there will have 20 to 26 billion out to devices around the world in 2020. So it's growing exponentially. So, I'm going to move here, I can't see the screen, sorry. So, blur. The reason why I said uh, digital is blurred because um, the digital is, we'll say, flat or straightforward. It's either zero or one, it's all programmed. While physical is conversion. So, so we, we, we say that digital and physical is now blended together, okay, in, in, in an unconscious way, okay, we're doing digital every day. Like, every day, every day when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do is to pick up my phone, check my schedule, check my email, everything. So, uh, we really can live without digital, or live without our mobile phone. We can live without our wallet, we can live without our keys, okay, live without our brain, but we cannot live without digital or mobile, okay? So, the reason why is because we do almost everything on our mobile device nowadays, okay? We, that's why I said, we check our calendars, we uh, book hotels, book flight, everything. Okay, everything is all about mobile applications. So let me give you a very real example. Okay. So I believe we should have. Uh, okay, next slide. So so I believe we should have experience on waiting taxi on the street. Okay, I, I don't think none of them did it. So traditionally, okay, we just stand on the street waiting, okay, especially we were suffering in Hong Kong, right, because we were in hot and humid weather. And what we do, okay, like back in three to five years, we may uh, pick up the phone and call a taxi driver, call a call center, and then um, try to make Trying to have a faster way to get a taxi, okay? But now, but I, uh, actually, I, I, I often do that, I usually do that. But now, it seems it doesn't work, okay? Because no taxi driver or no call center is helping you on that. Because every taxi driver is using a taxi app like Uber, Quiet, and Fire, okay? Uh, these kind of taxi apps, okay? 
I'm not sure many of you didn't notice this about the Texas Jackson in Hong Kong. They had like six, seven phones on the dashboard. Okay, went for Uva, went for five days after trial, okay? It's kind of dangerous actually. The story behind is actually an anti story. Okay? The phone that we are using is a very traditional uh, IoT device. And then we get your location data from this device. And then this device is talking with other devices, like um, the mobile phones, mobile devices, from the Facebook Pixel driver, using the location services in the both side to check which one, which taxi is nearest to you, and book the taxi. Okay? And when a taxi comes nearby, okay, the location service always also will give you a notification to alert you, hey, the taxi is just nearby. Right? How would how we do that? Because um, 90% of the adults nowadays have mobile phones. And 60% of them, more than that, more than 60% of the other, be it smartphone, either iPhone, uh, Android, Windows, whatever. Okay? So we can make use of the intelligence in mobile phones to make this happen. Alibaba uh, also looks at all this. They spent like millions of dollars investing in this uh, uh, taxi app in order to get into this space. So now, we see uh, mobile devices are really the interface, the, the core interface in the IoT world. So uh, the mobile devices not only collect and dispatch information like uh, uh, through the ID can, as Trevor just said, or NFC to collect or dispatch information, and also you get some uh, other information from the internet like the, your location, or if you have some other external devices, you can also, you can also collect uh, like your heart rate, your uh, the number of steps that you walked, and, all, and even the <coughs> temperature, and to get everything, okay, those contextual information, in order to provide, to, to provide a, uh, a context for, for the, the IoT to make the decision, to help, to help make the decision for you, okay? So the reason I said help, because uh, always, the device will suggest what you would do, okay? The decision is always on you. And also, uh, the device also provides interaction to notifications. And, and, and you see all these, okay, what I was just talking about, is uh, those functionalities are already in the wearables, okay? Both like uh, Android, Android Watch, Apple Watch, those wearables. We, we, we strongly believe that uh, wearables are attract to the IoT world, okay? And that's why you see uh, once Apple Watch is launched, everybody just want to go and get one, okay? And the price go up that high, that's the reason. So we strongly believe that where it was one of the major component that uh, IoT works on me. And uh, you will see very soon, okay, because um, one of the major airlines, Okay. Okay. In Hong Kong, it's a customer. They are they are they are putting effort in the in the work innovation. So, as a passenger ourselves, we enjoy those wearable very soon. So, in short, okay, we will have a granular view into our health, location, or even mood in the coming future. Okay, with the wearables and mobile devices. So, we are always happy to see technology change. Because um, we will see IoT is actually a revolution. It's an industrial revolution did. So every time when we have the industrial revolution, okay, um, the, the enterprise okay, changes the way it runs. And also it changes the people processes and technology as well. So uh, for the companies who have IoT initiatives, they think about a little bit of things, okay, benefit and the issue. Benefit that they can get, of course, um, they, they have the uh, workforce, workforce space automation, okay, will gain the, the, the uh, workforce efficiency. Okay, this is the benefit that they can get. But, of course, we have to face another issue, which is the workforce issue. Because um, the unskilled labor would turn into those uh, skilled labor to drive interaction with IoT. So, um, the displacement of, of the unskilled worker will be an issue that, that company should also think about. So it's just like uh, 30 years in Hong Kong um, with a lot of factories, a lot of factories worker, okay? Now I, I don't I don't see any of us in Hong Kong working as a factory worker. Okay. All of us okay, as, as, as management or to, to manage how the uh, 
how to work or how the uh, factory work works. Okay, this is the revolution. So the question is whether it's a must process. Are we going to follow follow IoT or can we skip that? Okay. Well, if you want to sustain the uh, competitiveness, okay, I believe IoT is the way. Okay. Ghana said 25% of the market leaders nowadays okay, will lose the position if they do not follow the technology and IoT for mobility thing okay, in the coming future very soon. And those will be replaced by those new companies who have established after 2000, okay, because they are very into technology, IoT, and mobility. So let's, um, let's share with, let us share with, uh, with you uh, some typical examples in some industries. Okay, first one being manufacturing. Okay, so manufacturing is one typical one that uh, already engaged in IoT. Since, I believe, uh, 1990s, okay, uh, manufacturing is already uh, an end-to-end -end business, like a machine to machine. Let me take an example of the brewery, okay, making beers. Um, factories and automation production line, from fermentation, bottling, distribution. Okay, that's nothing new to us. Okay, and that's the early stage of IoT. Okay, by like using a sensor, integrated with the with the computer. Okay, to automate the process of production line, and um, it tries to minimal human interaction. And what what the worker would do is to monitor, in like a control room with a computer. Okay, making sure that there's no problem. Okay, if there's problems with someone there, that's the prototype. Okay, early stage early stage IoT. So we can see, John Nasi said. All of this software and hardware results in fast time to market, improved asset utilization and optimization, lower total cost ownership, workforce efficiency, enterprise risk management, and smart expenditures. Okay, that's manufacturing. But, but now, with an example, okay, we see we see uh, manufacturing all already have some IoT concept, okay? But of course, technology now is gone. The, the worker or the uh, staff in a manufacturing plant, they are they're no longer sitting in the control room to control the machines, okay? Now, with mobility, they can walk anywhere, okay? So, so uh, when they have any failure of the plant or anywhere, okay, they receive notifications, okay? What does it mean? You do not have to spend time to walk back and forth from the control room or from the desktop computer back to the shop floor. So they can do everything on the shop floor. Okay. What it means to the company is this save more cost, save more time, and in fact save more cost. Okay, that's driving efficiency. And also, um, if we have intelligence or analytics in the in the uh, IoT network, so that say for example, when there's any failure on the shop floor. Uh, the network or the computer can, can help us uh, think about which engineer can have the skill set and which of them is available and about his availability to go to that uh, problem area to, to fix. So that we, we, we don't need to say, hey, that's the problem, and we're going to go back to the room and check the schedule, everything, okay, and go back. So this again, drive the efficiency. In old days, I believe um, uh, only big manufacturers, large manufacturers, adopting these kind of practices. But now, okay, it's moving to smaller ones. Okay, the reason why is because, uh, first of all, uh, the cost of the sensors or the RFID is not cheaper. Okay, I believe more than 10 times cheaper nowadays. And also, um, smaller manufacturers need to sustain competitiveness. Okay, with IoT, with this kind of uh, structure, they can reduce cost, okay, in order to, to compete with, with larger manufacturers. That's, that's how they do. So that's manufacturing. And another industry that I want to share is uh, uh, utility. And uh, actually, it's a revolution in the utility industry as well. Back in old days, uh, it's a one-way direction from the uh, energy producer to the consumer, meaning you can choose to use or not to use. Okay, no other choices. But now, it's a bi-directional age. Okay? Uh, the communication is no one way, it's both ways, okay? The customer can choose when to use, what to use, and how to use. Let me give you a very, very um, typical example. Uh, laundry, okay? 
okay, we don't know if they're going to be at home, right? But in the old days, can we pick when to, when to do our laundry? Okay, because we want to save some money, right? If we can, we can do the laundry in the peak season, <coughs> or in the off-peak season, even with the choices, of course, we choose off-peak season, right? So in the IoT world, <coughs> if the uh, energy supplier can give us notice, okay, can send us information on, hey, it's now off-peak season, you can start. Okay, your laundry or whatever task you want to do. Okay, this really can can save save us some money. Okay, and have better cost efficiency. So, in uh, the utility space, the producer is always want to maintain the uh, supply consistency. Like they use every method to generate electricity uh, by uh, wind. Solar, nuclear, all other things. The reason why is because they want to keep consistency to make us as a consumer have energy all the time. But while the customers' demand are fluctuating, meaning uh, we want to trust it, okay? So in IoT, we want to get it down to the touch, with the, with the touch points, okay? And um, uh, with thermal desk, intelligent lighting, we can make use of the location, the sensor, to build a smarter home with a smarter energy consumption. So let's take a look at the smart grid. Okay. Um, Who generates energy? Okay, it's not changed. Traditionally, only the supply generates electricity. But nowadays, we can have our uh, solar energy, home use, office use, right? And uh, so now we become a new energy producer. Okay, so both producer and consumer can supply energy. Okay, and IoT can help to make a decision on when to use which energy, either from supply or from ourselves. Okay, so if you use solar energy, we uh, generate the energy at daytime. Okay, we store energy. If we have enough use, that's fine. Okay, if we have excess, we store energy for night use. Okay, what if we want to swap? Okay, we can still make a decision on whether it's swapping from the, the, the energy that we store or from, from the energy that produced by a generator. Okay, so it's, it's really a really plan, right? So, so what it really means is IoT really gives choices on how we use our energy and when to use it. So, go to retail. Retail is more feasible in IoT. As uh, in the last section, can you share with us on how IoT works in Chicago, right? And um, actually Panasonic had a very big innovation. They uh, expressed this in National Federal Show, okay, which is the intelligent retail sharing. Okay, somewhat like uh, uh, those that can just share. Okay. And in, in, in this intelligent uh, retail shelving strategy, um, the sales strategy in the shop can be more like, more flexible, okay, as what we can do in the online shopping. Because traditionally, the price tag here is fixed. Okay, in online shopping, it's dynamic. But now, with the intelligent retail shape shopping, okay, we can have, um, I'm making use of the low Bluetooth technology, an eye beacon, just as a of use, okay, to determine the location of, 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 of the consumer. And then, do some dynamic pricing, ordering, of the fly, okay? Make use of the uh, uh, consumer profile okay, that they already have, and the location and interaction, etc. cetera, you know, to make those that dynamic, uh, dynamic pricing. Okay, so these uh, active and passive consumer data can also do some advertising and or link the consumer to the right location for pricing, etc. cetera. So, so this is a very typical good example of uh, machine intelligence and analytics. But of, but of course, Privacy is, is not an issue that was concerned. So let's bring it to a more realistic use case. Say it is a, uh, um, a retail shop, okay? So uh, let, let us see how the IoT journey start, okay? Let's say, for example, if the customer is driving near the store, okay, the location service on the phone can tell the store that, okay, he is the customer and who is he. Okay, then they can determine which advertising should push to, the, to, that, to that company. And then when he is inside the shop, okay, I can also help 
to time is consumer to um, uh, drive to this specific product, do some dynamic pricing, and all the sense of shop can do all some intelligent things like um, when the customer put, uh, tick, tick, tick to uh, the, the product, put, put it back, okay, maybe you can offer that to the discount. Okay, and if you go to the wrong shop, okay, can you notify the shop uh, attendance, okay, to the right way, and also uh, do some um, uh, auto replenishment thing, okay. And this is also uh, going to uh, extend to home use. So, IoT is uh, ambiguous. Okay, running IoT in a secure network to collect data from the like, sensor, machine, or the entire network and make some analysis to make some meaningful views to the users, okay? What, what is important, okay, of course, the, the uh, device is set important, okay? The mobile devices are one of the core ones, okay? We, we find that uh, mobile, mobile devices uh, play a very important role, okay, in the IoT network. So, Comey, who is a partner in the mobility platform, okay, will help enterprises to build the uh, uh, enterprise strategy, okay, from the uh, mobile app development, Deployment in, in integration to uh, uh, management. Okay, so company can be the right partner that help you to, to do the um, whole strategy. Okay, with the Kuno mobile fabric. Okay, they have a layer. Okay, we do all the um, integration, development, uh, all the synchronization, everything that you need for the mobile strategy. So. Uh, a summary, okay? You know, to make an IoT strategy work, okay, first of all, to align this with the old strategy, okay? And be sure that uh, changes, revolutionary changes, is going to happen, okay? That we to get about. And also, security is not an issue that we should be talking about. But Comey, uh, as, as a mobile platform, can help you to achieve all these. So, so we have a booth outside, okay? So, in the break, or lunch, okay, that's a very much.